Don't forget, there'll be weekly episodes of The Basics in December as we dive into Obscure Characters Month. Updated and expanded for 2023, it's time for a fresh look at the basics on one of the Transformers franchise's most iconic characters. The mind-reading, sound-controlling, master spy, Soundwave. The toy that would become Soundwave was originally released in the Japanese toy line Microchange in 1983, under the name Cassette Man. The toy transformed into a micro-cassette player and was designed to interact with the Cassette Robo released alongside it, small robots that converted into cassettes which fit inside the larger figure's tape door. The whole assortment was imported by Hasbro to become part of the first year of the Transformers toy line in 1984, with Cassette Man's head even serving as the inspiration for the Decepticon insignia. As Soundwave, the toy came packaged with the Condor cassette Buzzsaw, with others being sold separately. The cassette interactivity gimmick was a big hit and made Soundwave one of the most popular toys of the line. He remained on sale through 1986, one year longer than most other 84 figures, and later years would even see Hasbro produce new Transformers original cassettes to go along with him. Marvel Comics writer Bob Budiansky wrote a profile for Soundwave that assigned him the role of Decepticon Communications Officer, whose mastery of radio and electronic signals was so great that he could even read minds by monitoring the electrical impulses of others' brains. As characterized by Budiansky, he was a smooth-talking, backstabbing opportunist who had climbed up the Decepticon ranks by using his abilities to gather blackmail material on his teammates. However, very little of this personality translated to the Transformers animated series. Soundwave was one of the main Decepticon cast members in the show's first two seasons, and one of Megatron's most loyal followers. He was famous for his electronically modulated voice, provided by actor Frank Welker. Eject, rumble, frenzy, ravage, bizarre, destroy Autobots. The cartoon built upon Soundwave's talent for information gathering to depict him not just as communications officer, but also the Decepticon's espionage specialist. He often used his shrunken cassette player form to covertly gain access to targets, and he employed the cassettes as his personal spies and enforcers, who resided in his chest until called forth to do his bidding. The second season introduced Soundwave's Autobot counterpart, Blaster, with whom he first clashed in a Spotlight episode that saw Blaster foil his attempt to hypnotize humans with ultrasonic control signals. Though Soundwave's role in the cartoon was reduced after this season, the two rivals and their cassettes would face off again in both The Transformers the Movie and in another Spotlight episode in the third season, fighting over the sonic weaponry of the planet Eurythma. By contrast, Soundwave wasn't a very significant character in the Marvel comic book. In its stories, he wasn't even that close with the cassettes, who would often work on their own without him. Really, the only notable thing about him was that, for some reason, he was coloured purple and was sometimes drawn with a mouth. However, he would be brought to the fore in stories written exclusively for the United Kingdom's version of the comic. In addition to colouring him his correct blue, the British comic depicted Soundwave as the intelligent and cunning manipulator of Budiansky's profile, who knew how to play all sides of a situation to his advantage, and who even rose up to take command of the Decepticons on several occasions when they were without a leader. Playing on his function as a communicator, he was also the first character to host the comic's letters page. After Soundwave's toy was discontinued, he was phased out of the comic, one of several characters taken offline by a cosmically empowered Starscream. But it didn't stick, he was back online within a year, and enjoyed a Spotlight storyline in the UK comic in which he allied with Starscream to seize Decepticon leadership for them both. Immediately after Soundwave's discontinuation in 1987, a new version of his toy was released exclusively in the Japanese market that year, 
an upgraded version of the character named Sound Blaster, who sported a new black paint job and a larger tape door that could hold two cassettes instead of one. The story of this upgrade was told in the Japanese original cartoon, The Headmasters. In this series, Soundwave was destroyed in a final battle with Blaster, but his cassettes recovered his remains and brought him back to life as Sound Blaster using the super science of the planet Master. Sound Blaster appeared regularly throughout the series, and in the modern day, new Soundwave toys are often re-released in his colours. Check out the basics on Sound Blaster for the full story. One further toy of Soundwave was released in the original series in 1990, a non-transforming Action Master whose partner drone Wing Thing converted from a gargoyle into a weapon for him. A few more toys followed over the next decade, but they weren't exactly recognisable as Soundwave. In 1995, the Generation 2 toy line reinvented him as a Ford Thunderbird stock car, while 1997's Machine Wars made him a missile carrier. Really, this was the result of Hasbro applying Soundwave's name to some random toys in order to keep it in use so they wouldn't lose their trademark on it. And this practice also led to the introduction of a Beast Wars incarnation of Soundwave in the year 2000. This one explicitly a separate character who simply shared a name with the original. Dark, brooding, and with a tendency to be overly dramatic, Beast Wars Soundwave was part of the mutant range of figures who didn't have robot modes and instead transformed from bat to alligator. However, as Transformers entered the 21st century, these random uses of Soundwave's name quickly stopped. Every new incarnation of the character in the new millennium has been based on the original, a return to his roots that seen Soundwave emerge as one of the brand's most significant and popular recurring legacy characters, with copious numbers of toys and media appearances. Most modern takes on Soundwave are based on his portrayal in the original cartoon, with that iconic voice. And his most prominent cassette minion from the show, Laserbeak, has come to replace Buzzsaw as his standard pack-in partner. Now, modern stories tend not to feature Soundwave's mind-reading powers. Instead, they often play up his connection to sound and music by depicting him with the power to control sound itself and use it as a weapon. Also, the dated nature of his original alternate mode has required Soundwave to be reimagined with a variety of new, more era-appropriate forms over the years, most frequently communications trucks and stealth aircraft. Though the trade-off is, his new forms rarely have the same kind of strong thematic connection to his minions that his old alt mode did. That said, there have still been multiple toys, usually ones aimed at older fans and collectors, that recreate his classic cassette player form, or try to capture its essence in modern equivalents, like an MP3 player or a tablet computer. Soundwave's first big role in this new era was in 2005's Transformers Cybertron, which reimagined him as a stealth bomber, packaged with a laser beak who became a bomb for it. As seen in the Cybertron cartoon, this incarnation of Soundwave was an unaffiliated robot out to get revenge on the Transformers who destroyed his homeworld, Planet X. He was a master of deception and disorientation, who talked like a DJ and could alter his voice to impersonate anyone. Introduced in 2008, the Transformers animated incarnation of Soundwave turned into an SUV with a powerful sound system, while his minions transformed into musical instruments, like the included Laserbeak, who became a guitar. This version of Soundwave began life as a music-playing toy robot who was inadvertently evolved into a Decepticon by the life-giving power of the AllSpark key held by the Autobot's ally Sari Sumdak. He was a robotic revolutionary, out to subjugate mankind in the name of his fellow machines, able to use sonic control signals to enslave others to his will, including machines, humans, and even the Autobots themselves. There were plans to include Soundwave in the first live-action Transformers movie, 
But as those ideas were developed, they wound up inspiring the new characters of Blackout, Barricade, and Frenzy instead. So Soundwave had to wait until 2009's Revenge of the Fallen to make his live-action debut, for which Frank Welker returned to the role. In this movie, Soundwave transformed into a satellite, orbiting the Earth, monitoring transmissions, acquiring intel, and deploying his feline minion, Ravage, down to the planet. The 2011 sequel, Dark of the Moon, revealed Soundwave to be the mastermind behind a decades-long conspiracy to have human collaborators conceal the presence of an Autobot spacecraft on the moon. In this film, he adopted the form of a Mercedes-Benz as a means of getting close to and menacing Autobot allies Sam Witwicky and Carly Spencer, which earned him a swift death at the hands of Sam's guardian Bumblebee in the film's final battle. After the rather different takes offered by Cybertron and Animated, the movies really re-established Soundwave in his classic cartoon role as Megatron's loyal spymaster. And this would continue into the Aligned Continuity, a multimedia project launched in 2010 that aimed to provide a unified modern vision for Transformers lore. This continuity reaffirmed Soundwave as one of Megatron's first and most faithful followers, who joined him back in the days when his goal was simply to tear down Cybertron's corrupt, unequal society. In the various series that made up this continuity, Soundwave's alternate modes included a communications truck, introduced in the War for Cybertron video game, and a slender stealth drone form featured in Transformers Prime. As seen in the Prime cartoon, with Laserbeak acting as a second set of eyes and ears, Soundwave was always silently observing everything around him, eerie and still until the time came for him to take action, whether it was to battle Autobots or to defend Megatron against threats from within the Decepticon ranks. At the end of the series, the Autobots banished Soundwave through a space bridge portal to the barren dimension known as the Shadow Zone, but he wasn't gone for good. Soundwave returned a few years later in the 2015 sequel series Robots in Disguise. Escaping from the Shadow Zone with the help of a Decepticon cabal on Cybertron, he attempted to summon Megatron back to Earth to lead a new conquest of the planet, but he was foiled by Bumblebee and his team. Prime initially presented Soundwave as mute, having taken a vow of silence to prove that action spoke louder than words. But when the time came for him to break that silence, Frank Welker was behind the microphone once again. Now, Soundwave is typically depicted as a cold and impassive bot, but IDW Publishing dug under the character's emotionless exterior in their comic books in the mid-2010s. The comics fleshed out Soundwave's past and deepened his connection to his cassettes by telling the story of how they helped him learn to control his mind-reading powers in his youth, and gave him a leading role in the present when he stepped up to become Decepticon leader after the old and weary Megatron renounced Decepticonism. Hurt by this betrayal, Soundwave vowed to forsake Megatron's ways and return the Decepticons to their non-violent roots, first by establishing a commune where they could live in peace and equality, then by working with Optimus Prime to expand that dream of equality to include Earth as well as Cybertron, in the process coming to understand and value the lives of Earthlings as much as Transformers. It was a dream for which Soundwave ultimately sacrificed his life when he was destroyed by the power of the mystical Enigma of Combination, as he used it to save the Earth from the monster planet Unicron. IDW's take on Soundwave was mirrored in 2018's Transformers Cyberverse. This series also gave Soundwave a leading role, begrudgingly working with Hot Rod to lead a united Autobot Decepticon resistance against an invasion by the alien Quintessons. And as in IDW stories, he would also suffer a loss of faith in Megatron and ultimately succeed him as Decepticon leader, declaring an end to the war and making peace with the Autobots. This piece was threatened by the arrival of Tarn, a warmongering Decepticon from another dimension, but Soundwave laid down his life to protect his planet's future, 
overloading his sonic powers to destroy both Tarn and himself. Other notable appearances by Soundwave in recent years have included 2018's Bumblebee live-action movie, in which he was briefly featured leading the Decepticons on Cybertron in the absence of Megatron, and 2019's Siege toyline, which reimagined him with a boxy Cybertronian spacecraft mode and earned him appearances in the line's tie-in cartoon and comic books. Most recently, he's taken the form of a stealth bomber again for 2022's Transformers Earthspark, in which he's once again found himself at odds with Megatron, considering him a traitor to the Decepticon cause after Megatron joined forces with the Autobots to end the war. But with new toys, comics, animation and more already on the horizon, Whatever form he takes in the future, and wherever his loyalties may lie, there's no doubt that Soundwave will be a staple of the world of the Transformers for many years to come. Still one of the franchise's all-time great characters, it's truer today than ever before that Soundwave Superior. Soundwave Superior. Soundwave Superior. Soundwave Superior. And those are the updated basics on Soundwave. A long time coming, but I hope they were worth the wait. Let me know your favourite incarnation of him in the comments, and be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications to make sure you're back here next week as we kick off Obscure Characters Month 2023.